All right, guys. One and a half hours and a lot, a lot of murder later. We are now max level. See, Buki gets this. She's sitting here doing her karate moves. Uh, anyway, what's cracking with you people? Anata here, and welcome back to Sudeki. In the last one, we finished up the last of the side quests and hidden missions that we could do in the entirety of the story. Offspring, I level grinded every character up to the max level of 30. See? In this one, let's go ahead and max out to do what we can do. So we got three points um, for Tao. I think what we're going to do for him is bring this up to a nice round 200. And we're going to bring this one up a little bit. And then we're going to bring this up to a nice round number right there. Uh, since Tao was already close enough to the max level, I didn't get a lot of skill points available to him. Uh, Ailish, on the other hand, she was pretty low, so she got a lot of skill points, including getting double skill points in some areas. So let's go ahead and bring this up. Since her essence is maxed out, we can't do anything else with that, or essence her power is maxed out. So we're going to go ahead and get her health up pretty high. Um, there honestly isn't really much of a need to do what I'm doing right now, considering the fact that uh, <laughs> um, we're taking on the final boss today. We're beating Sudeki uh, once and for all. Um, it's interesting to really think about that with Ailish, we only put two points into her skill points. She's our white mage. You'd think we would have put a lot more into her skill points than anything else. Uh, that right there. Let's go ahead and just up her up her uh, essence game a little bit more. Just get that a little bit higher. Because um, it, it's really weird thing about that. Our white mage maxed out her power before she maxed out her actual like essence game. You know, because at because uh, honestly at two hundred skill points, you had enough skill cells to really get you through the game. Buki's pretty high up. Let's go ahead and max out her power. Um, but just max that out. Uh, and we and, and like I said earlier, early game I brought up that a lot of the um, skills that you get, a lot of the abilities that you get, you don't have to get all of them. You can just get the ones you like. Um, I've shown off. Actually, I haven't even I, I actually haven't even shown off all of the skills you can get in the game. No, but and again, I haven't shown off all the skills and what they do. I think I've only shown off. Claude, Frenzy, Stormkick, Asilas, and a few others, but, um, but trust me when I say you don't really need all of them to get through the game. Uh, let's go, let's go ahead and push her over to 200 threshold with that. Um, and yeah, so we, we, we pretty much hit max level, so you could... You could theoretically get a couple of more skills on here if you really want to. Let's go ahead and let's go ahead and just push her at five thousand. Let's 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 give Druki the highest health in the game. <laughs> well, he's the highest health as of right now. Um, Elko maxed out his power too. Um, his essence is high enough that he really doesn't need the help anymore. Um, his get his health over the three thousand limit too. Have him join the three thousand club. Uh, let's go ahead and just max it out. And there we go. And that brings all of us here. Now then, let's go ahead and use some of our remaining orbs. We have a couple of uh, enhancement orbs that we have not used yet. We have an orb of wisdom, an orb of vigor, orb of power, and an orb of might. Um... Let's go ahead and raise Tao's SP. Um, I really wish they wouldn't, you know, do that whole back to the top thing. Our power, orb of power. Um, let's, let's go. Let's go with that. Let's go with the helps first, since that one I don't need to really know too much about. Uh, let's get let's, put, let's bring that over to Alish. And these are just the orbs that we could really get with anybody. I just have yet to 
really allocate them. If that makes any sense. Oh, by the way, there's Apotheosis drink. Um, this is a res this is restores all HP and SP to all allies. I believe you can buy this off of other traders, but in the meantime, this is the only one that I know in the game that you can get. You get it from Venbar. I meant to bring that up in the last episode. Um, oh, wisdom. Uh, Let's go ahead and check the power and essence of everybody. So that's 77, 140, 120, 50, 88, 50. Uh, let's, let's go ahead and get Tao's power up a little bit higher and we'll give that essence one to the Elko. So let's, uh, there you go, Elko. And let's get Tao's power up a little bit higher. And yes, you have to do this every time you go back in to select one. It is. No, to be fair, you to be to be fair, what you could do is you could put this on the quick shot. And uh, which I honestly probably should have done because I, I completely forgot you can do this. I because I remember I used to do it all the time when I, when I got these orbs. You can put these on the um, quick shot menu and then just go like that. And then just hit the uh, directional icons to allocate the points you want to allocate. And with that, uh, we with that we pretty much got our characters where they need to be. Um, see, let's check out the last couple of new enemies. We got the Blood Gnat, the Pirouette, Elite Illumina Captain, Elite Illumina Guard, and Elite Illumina Archer. They're, they're, these really don't have much of a difference between their Aquarian counterparts. And just like that, we're good to go. So let's go ahead and hop a save. And take on the final boss. Because we're at the end game now. Not even kidding. You're at the end game now. Oh, the camera camera messed out there. I believe you were all brought together by Tetsu himself. Now, if you want to, before you do it, before you go to the final boss, you can have you have all these um extra work, uh, extra options. You have your I need more time before I face I do, which is pretty much if you know you have any side quests to do that you can get done, you just you use that to say, look, I know we're about the end game, but let me finish up that I gotta do here. Um, and just a heads up, pretty much. Every single side quest in this game can be completed at any point in time. If you really wanted to, well, I won't say any point in time. Up until, um, I believe, up until you head to the head to Acloria, you can complete any side quest any time. The moment you get to where, um, the moment you get to the point where you were um, Tal and Elko. Uh, have to go save Ailish and Buki, you can no longer do any of the side quests that require you to go to Illumina Castle, which is pretty much four or five, I believe, which, which is pretty much the um, the block puzzle to get um, the block puzzle and the spelling puzzle in the in the uh, in the court in the training yard. Arlo's eyes um, sneaking into Lucica's garden, the Red Key, the urchins, uh, pelts for Wall of. Uh, for, uh, I forget what uh, I forget what that dude's name is, but the, but the world of pelts, the throne room with uh, Lucica and all those hidden orbs and what you need all four characters to get to, and um, I believe that's about it. Actually, those are all the side quests. Oh, and getting the wolf totem in the castle because once you once once you lock out for night, you cannot get Tal's ultimate weapon. You can get. Pretty much everyone else's ultimate weapons after they go to Acloria, and you haven't found um, some of the other ones. But if you didn't get the Wolf Totem in La Luma Castle, you do not get Tal's ultimate weapon. But what you also can do is have Caprine tell you more about the Dark. Well, tell me more about the Dark Cells before we merge. Alexine is the daughter of a powerful lord, but she insisted on staying in the capital to help me rather than fleeing with most of the other aristocrats. So this tells you that Alexine 
that Lexing isn't a princess in this world, which is pretty much your first hint that Estelle is not a princess. Yes, even if some things are different, for the most part they stay the same. They never up and say that Carlo, um, well, I, I probably hold off on that, but I believe they never say that Carlo is not Cazelle's dad, because he looks just like General Arlo. Um, so this pretty much lets you know that Alish's blood right, Alish's succession to the throne, isn't actually legit. That's your. This is one of your first hints if you didn't um, talk to some of the other uh, in, individuals in in, uh, in the um, in the castle at Illumina. It also lets you know that Alexi, even with her very standoffish personality, how she comes up at the student array half the time, um, she was willing to stay and fight with every other rich snob up and ran. I think they're all dead now. Um, I believe you were all. Now I believe you have to do this every single time to talk to the, the talk to her every single time. You can't just say, "Tell me more." Kavu was a painter once. But since the light has faded, he has lost all of his artistic drive. Yeah, he pretty much has a bad sense of writer's block. So, he, and he also has, he also there wasn't a lot to say about him. He just said, yeah, he was a painter one time. Then the light faded, and he just lost his will, his will to paint anymore. I believe. So yeah, let's go to tell me more about the dark cells. Alexine is the door. Okay, so once again, these are random quotes. Let me see if I can't get the I last. To about Nico and Gazelle. Alexine is. Oh, she really likes talking about Alexine. Come on now. I believe. Come on now. Nico was a tracker for the army once. Her acrobatic skills and fearsome fighting style are well hidden behind her cheerful disposition. So this is interesting. Whereas Buki never wanted anything to do with um, Illumina. Nico was a tractor in the, was a tracker in the Aquarian Army, which it gave us was get was gives you a sense that the equivalent of the anthropomorph tribe here worked pretty closely with the uh, with essentially the the humans of the world. So this so that's kind of interesting. Now all I've left is Cazelle. I... Kafu was a painter. Okay, that's Kafu, not pa not Cazelle. Come on, we need a little I... bit more about. That's one more. Alexine. She really likes to talk about Alexine. Come on. I believe. was a. Okay, come on. One more. I believe. You know you want to talk, Caprine. Kafu was a. Come on now. This is happening now, so let's skip when we do get it. Kafu <laughs> was a painter one. Okay, cutting. I. Cazelle and his troops are among the last soldiers that remain loyal. Okay, there we go. So I had to switch to Ailish. I don't know, I honestly don't know if you get these based on what character you talk to Caprine as, but we find out, honestly, really, Alexi is the one with the most, with, with the most said about her in terms of what we learned, but here we learned that Cazelle and the Aquarian troops here, which let you know that Cazelle in the Aquarian army was a much higher rank individual than Tao was, his troops remained loyal to Caprine and to Acloria in, in sign time. Then, um, then, um, Garrett. Um, but there's not many of them left. It's barely enough to even really stage any kind of offensive against anything. And with that, we're ready to merge. Let's get it over and done with. I believe you were all brought together by Tetsu himself. I am ready to face Haigu. Teleport me to the void. Shadows. The Shadow Nexus is the gateway to the Void. Tetsu will open the path into the Void for us. There we will merge. Let's go.
To begin the ceremony, we must give praise and thanks to Tetsu. Um, I praise Tetsu, Elko. Uh, I praise Tetsu? With conviction, man. You're talking directly to God. I praise you, Lord Tetsu! I praise you, Tetsu! I give thanks to Tetsu the Unifier. Praise unto him, Tetsu, Guardian of Sadeki. Praise to Tetsu. Um, praise to, uh, Tetsu? Second age of unity, unity, unity. Your destiny awaits, awaits. Joy with your shadow, shadow. Too late. I call upon the powers of separation to destroy the lines of Karastan, Olivetes, Libius, and Mo. Now and forever. Together, but we will not be thwarted. I have the dark powers of Haigu pulsing through my veins. Which one of you is the conduit of Tetsu? Ours is an old score to settle. Tell, don't die. I'll try not to. Zell was my brother, and now he is part of you. Have you the heart to kill your own flesh and blood? 
You? You don't understand what it means to have a brother. Oh, but I do. I know that your brother cried out your name when I slit his throat. Who will cry out your name, Talos? I weep for no one. And no one weeps for me. And here we are, here we are, in the uh, final boss fight with Talos, uh, embedded with High Beauty, at, I mean, I'll well, play as, a uh, as, um, uh, Talon Kazel merge. Can I just say, that got me one of the best villain comebacks I have ever heard in my life. Cause it, it really just embodies, like, um, um, what Hyde was all about in his whole thing of separation that they got going on. Because he literally is just like, look, hey, look, no one's gonna no one's gonna remember your name, no one's gonna care about you. Don't you feel doesn't that make you feel some kind of way? He's like, I really don't care. And it has the, and he has the best voice I've ever heard come out of a thing, you know? Now, with uh with uh Talos here, Talos has pretty much every move that we have seen him use uh, when we were Fear my wrath. No, okay, as I was saying, uh, Talos has every single move that we saw him use um, when we when we had him at Elko as a temporary party member, but. He also has a couple of uh, special moves that... <laughs> he has a couple of special moves that Haigu gives him. Some of which are moves that our, um, that our party actually use. Like this, for instance, right here is a move that... Um, Technically, Buki gives us it. It pretty much slows the world around us. And what he'll do is he'll use these moves depending on how much health he's uh, he's lost. And he will give you some trouble uh, as a fight. So it's recommended you use pretty much every skill you've got at your disposal to take him down. So as you saw his first move, he splits himself into three. All you really have to do is just do damage to each of the three. Um, um, can't carry on. Okay, let me get some health in here. Uh, Take sure that should do it. Okay, there we go. So how, so yeah, so basically he has I believe three super moves. Two, two super moves. One that lets him split into three. One that lets him slow time down. And there's one that he does that is um that is essentially like just debuff the move. Okay. It's recommended that you pretty much use all of your skills when to beat him because man, oh man. You shall feel my rage! Is he is he is he one heck of a fuck tough I think? Even at max level. As you can see, I'm still having trouble. You will die here, my friend. Now, what this does, okay, so it doesn't so it doesn't debuff you, but what it does do is it um it summons a skull. And the skull says he charges at you. At the same time, he's healing up and he has pretty much every single buff on him. Regen, double damage, half damage, increased speed. So what you're going to want to do is just outlast all these moves. Don't, don't worry about trying to fight him. Don't worry about trying to, you know, take damage. Just, just outlast him. It. It's going to suck. Uh, another thing you can do is pretty much uh, use the end your skills to negate some of the healing he does. Um, 
just to make sure he doesn't get to use, to use full use, to make full use of it. Um, but once again, it is a very tough thing to do. Um, you also have the teleport move. The earth and you shall feel my rage. Okay, that's you right, right there. With all that double damage, he dang near took out my entire health off of that. So, it's recommended that you do not let him get anywhere near you, if you can avoid it. Look at that, 1200 damage on one hit. And I think that was a crit damage too, so he can mess you up if you're not careful. So he's lost pretty much all of his buffs. Let's go ahead and the blade dance on him. But yeah, no, it's I was legitimately shocked when I first got to this fight when I was younger, because this fight A kicked my butt. This, this one this one of the first boss fights I ever beat by myself without anyone's help. Um you and it took me a couple of years to actually beat. Um, as you as you remember being on this final boss, and this, and this, and this is how you avoid this move. You just you just you just make use of the invincibility frames that your that your uh, that your dodge will give you, and then you just outlast it. That's all you that's all you can do with that. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, I just remember getting to this boss. I remember getting so much trouble as a kid, um, and I remember I would, I remember I booted the game up one time like five years later. I loaded the same save file. I still remember how to play the game, and I um, and I actually beat him. Now, can I just now? I'm gonna say one thing about this. I don't like how they do this. I understand why they did it because the AI for all the um, other player characters would have just been too hard to program in as like um, actual helpful characters and whatnot. But I don't like that we talk about unity this and unity that, and how do we beat Haigu as Talos? How Talos do uh, Haigu by splitting the party by? And into a form. Um, and I'm being serious here. It's like, like, like we have this entire thing about the age we need to, need to beat him together. And what do we do? You are you lose three fourths of your move set essentially. Teach you real fast. There you go. Okay. There we go. And oh yeah, when he gets down to look like like a uh, good you chunk, he'll just start spamming all of his special moves. Um, this one's far as far the easiest one to deal with, because you can still do damage to him even with his three extra out. Um, so that that does help. And I don't think they each have different health bars. I think they have this. no, no, they have different health bars. You look, you just gotta look for one thing: health bar that accurately looks like you're going out. And we do enough damage to him. Um, you can then I think I think we'll then despawn the other two. So just keep him just keep your eye on the one with the actual proper health bar. Huh? So you can throw it away. Well, well. A little bit of health here. Uh I have another luster. Here we go, luster through. Okay. Um, but yeah, I mean, I get what they didn't do because the AI for each of the characters and the ability they gave Talon to Taigu would have been ridiculous. Was that kill him? No, I killed. I killed one of his one of his clones. Okay, I thought I legit killed him for a second there. Um, but 
I don't know, it's just, it, it, it always went in the wrong way that it's like, you don't, like, they expected you to move a lot of your special moves, like, freaking Ocelus and, uh, and, you know, Elko's trick shot, oh goodness, that would have broken this fight in half. But don't get me wrong, I get what they did, but I get what they did. I honestly get why they did it, because it would have been really hard to program that in. But still. But still. It's just one of those things where it's like they could have really, you know, reworked that. But hey, it is what it is. Another thing I kind of wish they would have done, that I get why they didn't do it because technology at the time and whatnot, is instead of using the pre-render cutscenes, I'm gonna prefer like any game model. So when you have Tao and Kazel standing side by side in the void, you have um you, you can have potentially uh Tao and Kazel with their weapons in the end with well look Tao with his ultimate weapon that looks pretty much like Kazel's weapon. Um and really have that kind of mirror thing going on, you know. I think that would have been pretty interesting. I also, I also like the fact that when a when a Kafu and Elko merge, Elko gets his arm back. The one thing I don't like, and this is like just like the one thing I grab I don't like, and there's nothing that goes kind of goes back to Fuji kind of getting shafted on her uh, character design. I don't particularly care for Buki's um, Buki and Nico's merge look because it doesn't it doesn't make any sense. Like, why does she have a crown? And where was the orange? Like, it wouldn't make sense if she had, like, a steel gray outline on, like, the red or something. I don't know, maybe, like, red into it. I mean, cutting everyone else's final design look amazing. Anderson's final design looks amazing. Uh, Elko's final design looks amazing. You know, and, and, and Tao, you know, he looks pretty dope. He's got his country warrior look going on. This, this, this legit dope, but it's like... It's like, it's like, Buki is like, it's like, they just kind of... Is it, it feels like it was a beta design that they didn't know what to do with, and they didn't want to waste it, you know. So, eh, it is what it is. It is what it is. Um, also kind of well like is like you got like a if you like got the ultimate weapons, you um when they merge, you got like these final, final ultimate weapons that kind of like merges the two blades together. That would have been legit dope. Oh, what's this? Right, right, right. I forgot, I forgot, I forgot, I forgot. Uh, I forgot, he has a final move that for all intents and purposes, does all your damage to that does all the damage to you. You will die here, my friend. And it is you know, it, it, it takes you down to all it takes down to one HP and it is ludicrous. Well since we're here and since I can still do damage to you, I'm going to avoid this attack. And we're going to use Sword of Ashra. I call on Karastan to deliver final judgment! And so the fable fell into the past. Sudeki was born bright at last. When truth is sought, the truth will out, and brightness casts the darkness out. Know thyself with all your faults, 
and all before you will see you as you truly are. Too dicey. Um, now I should now it, now I will admit when I got to this bit I felt a little bit chipped because it's just a random still image of Nasario's grotto of all things and then just text scroll. This is one of the most anticlimactic endings to a game ever. We don't get any resolution on talent and it's just subplot. We don't really get we don't get any resolution on what happened to the world after it emerged. It just ends. Um, now there is a hidden, a hidden ending on YouTube, it's 50 plus ending, a bonus ending on YouTube, it's 55 seconds long, I believe it has the original voice actors in it, um, and, uh, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna, I'm gonna paste it into the, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut it into the end of this, of this, uh, of this segment, and go from there, and maybe add some post-commentary, uh, just to really elaborate on, on on it, but um, all in all, Sudeki is still a fun game. Um, even all these years later, it is still one of the best games I've ever played in my life. Um, is it flawed? Yes. The final act of the game could have used a little bit more work to really bring it to life. Um, I still maintain that we should have gotten a lot more time with the uh, Aclorian counterparts to our main cast. I think that Aploria should have been a little bit bigger and a little bit, a little bit more, um, oh, Phil Spencer was on this game. <laughs> Go for that. Um, I think it should have been a little bit bigger. I think it should have been a little bit, um, more fleshed out rather than just having essentially three locations. Because in, um, Illumina we had Shadaddy Mo, Illumina, Transcentia, uh, the bright water, and we, like, we had we had and we had a good just couple of couple places to visit, and that were really fleshed out. We really only had like a, the Gloria Stronghold, Crystal Reef, and the Sardis Grotto tacked onto it, and then Scientine Citadel. Um, what would I like to see? I well, I would as much as what I'd like to see from Sudeki going forward, if Sudeki ever does get you know revitalized or has a game more to just keep on it. I would like to either see a remake along the lines of, and I said a couple of times so for Let's Play, um, a remake on the lines of what we got for, you know, Final Fantasy VII or the or the, re or the Spiral trilogy or the Crash Bandicoot trilogy, you know. Um, but what I would like to see more than anything else is a sequel to this game. I think that there is something worth seeing in this game, even with the hidden ending we got near the tail end, uh, hit anything we got, uh, that's, you know, was released on YouTube. It's, it's pretty low quality, but it's the best I can find. And I believe it was done by the original team. Tell! Go on, Eilish. I'm so glad you're alive. So am I. Oh, excuse me. Well, <coughs> don't, don't you play hero next time, but hey, you did well. <laughs> Come on, we have a new world to go back to. Yes, let's go. So then, how are you going to cope with not being a princess anymore? I might just rock it with you commoners for a while. And yeah, I just think that it would have been appropriate if we got ourselves um, just a follow-up with the characters reborn in their new lives. You know, just to see just how different the world of Sudeki actually is now that it is the world of Sudeki. Um, you know, expand upon the combos, maybe give each of the characters different utilities, have give them different uh, specialities in in-game combat besides just their specials to 
really make switching between them more worthwhile because as you saw there, I pretty much stuck to one or two characters throughout the entirety of the game. Um, you know, is it a Buki or Tal that I was playing as when I had Elko or Aelish, it was just the same combat over and over again. And I applaud them for mixing in the combat. It, it was really interesting to actually have a game that gave you third person action uh, combo based gameplay and first person shooter um, all in one. And I would argue, I, 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 at least I haven't seen anything do anything like this since. But beyond that, um, we're probably never going to get a follow-up to Sudeki. I believe the studio that made this game did end up shutting down. Um, or they didn't shut down, they're not producing any, um, any big name quality content at the moment. Um, I doubt you could get any of the original voice cast back, because a lot of the original voice cast were actually, um, um, talent, uh, from the UK on UK TV. As a matter of fact, I believe Buki was a, was actually on a popular tele television, uh, television, um, series, and, you know, after I splice in the, um, the, um, extra ending, I'm going to, you know, bring up, uh, some more of the characters that you, because I usually make, make a point to mention the voice actors, I just don't know as much about this, um, about the voice actors in this game as I used to do about, like, games like Sonic or, uh, Halo and stuff, uh, because, once again, this was, for all intents and purposes, a one-off. You didn't, you, you didn't get anything else after this, um. This is, this is weird because like in this time you had games like Time Splitters and I believe uh, Blinks, you know, those, these games got sequels and whatnot and they were essentially these fun quirky games from um, over in England that did get sequels to them. Um, and it's just kind of a shame that a game like Sudeki, a game that in my opinion comes around only once every console generation just didn't get, you know, the kind of like cult revival that a lot that a lot of the other games got, you know. Um, but hey, that's just me. Hey, that's just me. Yeah, and after looking into it a little bit more, uh, Climax Studios, um, they're still an independent company. They, I think, the last big name game franchise they worked on were Silent Hill, Shattered Memories, uh, and Silent Hill Origins, which I believe those games were not well received, mostly by the Silent Hill fan base, but to my understanding they weren't, you know, good games on their own merits. So it, it is sad to see them kind of fall from this particular game franchise, um, but they are still kicking around. I don't know if the original team who worked on Sudeki is still there, but they are still kicking around. Um, but, um, yeah, I... I would just like to see another attempt... Uh, well, not another attempt, I... Because I don't think another attempt would be alright. I would just like to revisit this world again, you know? Um, I said it, I said it a couple of times throughout the playthrough. I said it a couple of times in these closing statements, but I would like to sit down and play through just another Sudeki game at some point. Um, but hey, once again, I don't think that's going to happen. If it does, I doubt they could get the original voice actors back. Um, you could always get sound alikes, especially with at the age of YouTube and just with everybody. Um, kind of sharing their own talent as voice role, as voice actors on the platforms out there, you could probably find a good sound alike for each of these characters. Um, shoot, I wouldn't mind playing Lord Talos if I could, if I think I'd get away with it. But, <clears throat> but, um, yeah, that's, uh, that's been Sudeki, you know? If we do get a sequel, you best believe I'm going to be the first one in line to buy it. If we don't, at least I have the original to come back to every once in a while to just kind of relive the early days of the Xbox back when we didn't have to worry about having all of these serious games nowadays, you know? Uh, bit of a tangent here, but I do kind of miss when we had games like Sudeki that 
weren't afraid, weren't afraid to be stylish, um, sexy in cases in, in the case of some of the characters, um, creative. You know, just is is a really it is a creative game. Like I said, it, like I, said, I don't think I can I don't think I can think of a single game that's like it. And I just kind of missed that with especially with all this grim dark. When I mean grim dark, just this overly grounded stuff. Um, that's been coming out recently, uh, and that's just me. That's just me, and trust me, if you stick with me throughout, throughout the uh, throughout the channel, you're going to hear a lot more of what I have to say about that. But at any rate, time to wrap this up. Time to call call it for our journey in Zudeki. I've been Anansi. You've been awesome, and I'll see you in the next one.